So you've tested your DNA and now the companies are telling you you have all these matches. Well, how many of them are you actually related to? Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics and this is a segment of DNA. Today, we're gonna to talk about how many cousins you can expect to actually find through DNA testing. Now this might seem like it could be any number of cousins, hundreds, thousands, even millions, but it's not because of the way that DNA is inherited. There's some things that we need to know beforehand in order to figure out how many cousins we're actually gonna be able to find from our DNA test. Now there's three things we need to know in order to calculate how many cousins we can hope to find from our DNA test. The first thing is we need to know what the probability of us sharing DNA with any random cousin actually is. Now for our first cousins, that is 100%. We are always gonna share DNA with every single one of our first cousins. So that's real easy to calculate. Second cousins, when we go to the statistical models, it's actually pretty close to 100%, more than 99%. And so far from actual testing, we haven't ever found any second cousins that don't share DNA. So it's probably 100% also. So first and second cousins, all of them we share some bit of our DNA with. But then we get to third cousins and the numbers go down. We only share DNA with about 90% of our third cousins. So there's 10% of our third cousins that we share no DNA with and no matter what DNA testing we do on ourselves and on them, we're never gonna be able to match up. And it gets worse from there. We share DNA with 45% of our fourth cousins. We share it with about 15% of our fifth cousins and only about 5% of our sixth cousins. And once you get to seventh cousins and beyond, it's less than 1% of those people that we share any DNA with. So the vast majority of all of our cousins, we don't share DNA with, and so DNA testing of you and of them is not gonna help find that match. So the second thing that we need to know is how many cousins do we have? Everybody probably knows about how many first cousins they have. Those would be the grandparents, kids, kids. Now, I myself, I have 32 first cousins. I can count them all up. My wife, on the other hand, she only has four first cousins. I remember on one of the videos, somebody commented that they have 120 first cousins, 120 first cousins. So it really varies widely family to family. And if you are the child of parents who were both only children, you have zero first cousins. So we gotta have an idea of where to start with and first cousins is a good place to start. So I'm gonna start with 32 in building up my table. Now the next is our second cousins. Unless your family is really tight knit, you probably don't know the majority of your second cousins. I honestly can't think of the names of any of my second cousins. I don't know them. Now that may be because I already have 32 first cousins and so there was no need to get to know all these other second cousins because I already had this huge family to begin with. But for some people, they do know some of their second cousins and maybe they even know almost all of their second cousins. And depending on how large your family is, just like with your first cousins, that may be a small number, it may be a large number. It really all depends. So for the rest of us who don't know who our second cousins are, we just have to use a rule of thumb. And the rule of thumb I use is you have five times as many second cousins as you do first cousins. How accurate this is? Well, over large populations, that's probably about accurate when you're looking at genealogies. Over my specific instance, I don't know because I don't know my second cousins and without mapping all that out, I'm not gonna find out. And I don't wanna do that. So then we get to third cousins. And again, just using a rule of thumb, I would use five times how for many second cousins. So you can see me starting off with 32 first cousins, I have 160 second cousins. And that means I have about 800 third cousins and I have 4,000 fourth cousins and on down till I get to seventh cousins, which I have about 400,000 of, and it gets into the millions of eighths and ninths and tenths cousins. So there's a lot of cousins out there that I could possibly match with. But remember, we already talked about what's the probability that you actually share DNA with any of those cousins. And so to find the number of cousins that we could actually match to, we gotta multiply the probability 
times by the number of cousins that we have. So like I said, with first and second cousins, it's about 100% probability. So we can multiply those across. So my 32 cousins, I'm going to match somewhere with all of them. Same with all of my 160 second cousins. Then we get to our third cousins, and I said there was only a 90% probability. So even though that number is 800, I'm only gonna be able to match to about 720 of them. And we continue on till we find that even at seventh cousins, where I have 400,000 seventh cousins theoretically, I'm probably only gonna match to about 4,000 of them. So now we have the number of cousins that we match, and it's still in the thousands. So you would think that by testing with DNA, we'd still be able to find all these second and third and fourth cousins. But you may be looking at your list from Ancestry.com or from 23andMe, and you may be seeing that, hey, the predicted relationship, there's only one or two second cousins, and there's you know, a handful of third or fourth cousins, and, and it's not until you get to the sixth and seventh cousins that you're in the hundreds. So why is this? Why don't we match up with that? Well, it's because of the third variable. We also need to look at who's actually had their DNA tested. Because DNA is a record that you hold inside of you, until you test, you haven't actually created that record into a database that can match with anybody else. So while we may have thousands of cousins that we potentially can match to, we're only gonna match those that have actually tested. And then again, we're only gonna match a fraction of those. So how many people have tested? Now in the two major databases, 23andMe and Ancestry.com, right now there's about 7 million samples. Now some of these are the same people, some of them are not from the United States, but that's a good starting point. I'm actually gonna round up to 9 million to make the math really easy and so that I don't have to redo this video with new numbers in six months when it gets to 9 million. With 9 million people, that's about 3% of the population of the United States that has changed. So I now have to take the cousins that I could potentially match with, and I need to multiply that by 3% to see who's actually tested that I'm going to match with. And as we fill in the numbers, you can see from my first cousins, even though I have 32 first cousins, which may seem like a lot, I'm probably only going to match with one person. And in actuality, none of my first cousins have tested at all. So I match with zero of them. With my second cousins, I had potentially 160 that I could match with. Because I got to multiply by 3%, I'm probably only going to match five of them. Five, that's it. And from all of my DNA testing that I've done so far and checking with matches and trying to build trees, I have found one second cousin in all of that. So one out of those possible five. So most likely my second cousins aren't into DNA testing near as much or I don't really have 160 second cousins. Maybe I have a lot less. When we get to third cousins and fourth cousins, the numbers are starting to go up a little bit, but certainly not near as much because it's just 3% of those totals. And you can see by the time you get to sixth cousins, 3% is only 120 of them. Even though you had tens of thousands and with seven cousins, you had 400,000 and it's still only about 120 of them that you're gonna be able to match with. So all told, if you add those numbers up, your first through your seventh cousins, it's only gonna be about 400, uh, maybe 450 people that you're potentially related to. And if you don't have that many first cousins, or if you know you don't have that many second cousins, that number is gonna be even less. So why is it then that Ancestry and 23andMe and even Family Tree DNA, when you look at your matches, you may have 1,000 or 1,500 or 2,000 or 2,500 matches? Well, it really has to do with the randomness of DNA. All these numbers and trying to calculate how many potential matches you could have are based off of some theoretical numbers. We've already said that we don't know how many second cousins we have, and so we're taking an estimate of that. But the amount of DNA that gets passed down to different generations individually is pretty random. We know from a group standpoint, it's 50%. It averages out to 50%. But from an, on an individual standpoint, it's different. So you can have large segments of DNA that are passed down several generations without being broken down into smaller amounts. And it will make people look like fourth cousins who are really eighth or ninth or tenth cousins even. And so that's why when you're looking at a lot of these databases, they're showing thousands of people that you potentially match, even though from the numbers we've just shown, it's probably only about 400 in the seventh generation time frame 
And that's because most of these people are actually related to you probably much farther back than seven generations. Even if the amount of DNA they have says that they're within that seven generations, most of them are outside that seven generations. And unless you have an extensive family tree on both of your sides, you're probably not gonna find out how the two of you match up. I hope this video was helpful in helping you know how many people you're actually gonna match. Don't get discouraged because as more people test, you're gonna be able to find more matches. And you'll have that experience of having match with other people to be able to help others as they test and they get to be part of this genetic genealogy. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so that it can reach more viewers. Don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss another episode of Family History Fanatics.